While we are here today to pay tribute to fallen comrades, let me make it clear that unlike some others and other parties, I do not pretend to know or presume to know what the thoughts of our, our attitudes of those fallen comrades would be on the present situation, or indeed on any of the, deve the developments that have impacted upon our struggle over the past number of years. But I can state one thing with certainty. The objectives to which they pledged their lives, to which they pledged their allegiance, the objectives for which they gave their lives, are the same objectives which were very clearly enunciated through the 1916 proclamation and the democratic program of 1919. Comrades, those objectives have not been achieved. Settling for anything less than those objectives was never an option for those who remember and honour today. The business of, of Easter week 1916 remains unfinished. The most cursory reading of the 1916 proclamation reveals that the goals and objectives of those who mobilised, who fought, who were imprisoned, and those who were executed are far from complete. Ireland remains divided by imperialism. The livelihoods of the vast majority of Irish people are controlled by undemocratic capitalist forces which stretch from this island to London, to Washington, to Brussels. Those undemocratic forces are supported both north and south by a pliant, subservient and self-serving political class. They are the same undemocratic controlling forces which the Irish Citizens Army and other progressive forces mobilised against in 1916. Those same undemocratic forces sought to criminalise the men and women of 1916. Just as they sought to criminalise Republicans in every decade since then. This morning in McCabry Prison, the British authorities are engaged in yet more conflict with Republican prisoners in an attempt to criminalise them. All those prisoners seek comrades as political status. And from here today, I call for full political status to be given to all Republican prisoners, both North and South. While today we celebrate and commemorate the 90, 94th anniversary of 1916, more importantly, we, sh we must commit ourselves to continue the struggle for a democratic, independent and sovereign Ireland. An Ireland whose total resources come under the control of the working class of this island. A truly free Ireland. That is our objective. To settle for anything less than that dishonours the vision of those who we commemorate today. Events over recent years have been disparating for many, but comrades, previous generations of Republicans also lived through dark and disparating times. They responded by re-engaging in various facets of the struggle, by reorganizing and by rebuilding new networks and new alliances with other progressive and radical forces in order to bring about revolutionary, revolutionary change. That is the task which lays before us today the task which lays us before, before us tomorrow, the day after that, and the day after that. The task for every one of us is to help build a republican and revolutionary potential to drive the vision forward of a new Irish Republic and to awaken the inherent desire for true political, social and economic freedom and justice that exists amongst all people, young and old, in our villages, towns and cities, in our workplaces and in every one of our communities. In conclusion, comrades, as you leave here today, I would ask you to remember this. In the course of his oration at the grave of O'Donovan Rossa in 1915, Patrick Pierce said these words, The defenders of this realm have worked well in secret and in the open. They think that they have pacified Ireland. They think that they have purchased half of us and intimidated the other half. They think that they have foreseen everything think that they have provided against everything. Pierce, Connolly and their comrades later proved that the defenders of the realm were completely wrong in their thinking and their assessment of republicanism. Today a similar thinking and assessment of republicanism pervades the mindset of the British government and of the, Brit of the establishment parties in both the six and twenty-six counties who accept, 
they accept a two-state partition of settlement in Ireland. Just like Connolly, Pierce, and McDermott, Thomas Ash, and all those others who left the grave side of O'Donovan and Rossa in 1915. As we leave here today, let us go, comrades, each one of us, armed with the firm intention and the firm conviction of proving such thinking by our enemies to be completely wrong again. So let us remember our patriot dead, our fallen comrades and our friends with pride. But not just for the sake of remembrance only, but so that their example will encourage us all to continue the struggle onwards to achieve their vision and their goal of a free, independent, 32-county socialist republic. Very good, comrades.